Hopefully this will be the last part. Going where we left off, the immune response is an important determinant of the viral host interaction in causing pathology. Ultimately, a weak cytotoxic lymphocyte response and to some extent an NK cell response will lead to an effective clearance of the virus in persistence. T helper cells are also um, uh, quite important in this response, presumably through their effects on the downstream cytotoxic T cell responses. I mentioned genetics to point out that there have been some s studies showing that certain interleukin polymorphisms as well as HLA haplotypes have been associated with increased likelihood of clearance of the hepatitis C virus after vertical transmission as well as spontaneous clearance after the development of chronic hepatitis C. The virus plays a role in the potential dampening of the immune response. We do know that hepatitis C has the ability to de degrade STAT1, which is an important signaling molecule, upregulating interferon responses, NS3A and NS4A have been shown to interfere with the signaling via different pathways. But for the virus really to be disease causing, it needs to strike a fine balance between dampening the immune response such that it will persist, but not too much such that there will not be enough inflammation to cause ongoing injury and fibrosis. This is a leading theory behind why hepatitis C leads to cirrhosis com uh, with uh, biopsies showing lymphocyte infiltration amongst the hepatocytes, common with suspected cytokine-mediated injury that would follow. The goals of the host are a bit more clear. Its primary goal would be to clear the virus, which is where most of our antiviral therapies are targeted at. However, if it cannot do so, then the focus would shift to damage control, which is where a lot of our recommendations come from. Even in pediatrics, despite the paucity of evidence for some, just because we know that limiting further hepatotoxicity would be logical. Shifting to the last topic would be pediatric hepatitis C treatment options, which as you can see are limited to two main ones. At the moment we have interferon alpha, which is an important player in the innate immune response as discussed, and ultimately leads to the upregulation of interferon stimulated gene products, which include DNA, double-stranded RNAs, and products that inhibit viral protein translation, as well as preventing T-cell apoptosis and activating NK cells. Ribavirin, on the other hand, is a broad-spectrum antiviral with immunomodulatory properties as well. It is not clear exactly how it affects hepatitis C, other than that, that it directly will redu reduce replication. There are other postulates as to why it can inhibit hepatitis C. Last, I just wanted to draw your attention to the recent JPGN article on the practice guidelines from NASPGAN on management of hepatitis C infection in infants, children, and adolescents. In it, there is a good discussion on some of the side effect profiles noted with peg interferon and ribavirin, and uh, it would be worthwhile looking at these in preparation for our cases tomorrow. Thank you very much, and appreciate your patience with these technical difficulties.